For more content like this, for more content like this, log on to gibbopresents.com. It's Gibbo and right now I'm joined by a recording artist, community activist, yoga instructor and the creator of the jazz on dub sound. It is Janine. Janine, how are you? I am well, give thanks, give thanks. As we speak, we are only a few days away from the release of your second album, Nine set to be released on September the 9th, the ninth day of the ninth month in this 2016, yeah. the year of the nine. <laughs> Your use of nine is not some gimmick. There's deep meaning behind it. So to start with, can you explain the significance of the number nine? Well, the most personal significance of the number nine is that it is a part of my name. My name is Janine, it's spelled J-A-N-I-N-E, which is the English spelling for the number nine. So I have always been drawn to that number. I've always paid attention to it and how it unfolded in my life. And for those of us who understand numbers, we'll know that if you pay attention to a number, you'll start to see it occurring in your life over and over, you know? So that's a part of why I was always drawn to it. And when I decided to become a recording artist, I chose to use Janine as my name. The number nine in and of itself has great meaning, you know, in numerology as well, in mathematics, um, how it affects other numbers, its relationship to the circle. It is a feminine number, you know, it is a number of completion and renewal. After nine, the cycle has to begin again. Um, and yeah, I mean, this is the information age. I don't have to teach anybody about the number nine. There's so much information on it if you if you are paying attention. So I just wanted to give the people something to to give them a little, you know, a little knowledge, a little knowledge, so that it's not just the atypical information that they're getting. It's something that will intrigue them and expand their their capacity a little bit. When did you begin working on this album and can you talk me through the different stages and processes you went through along the way? Hmm. Well, I started working on the record last year, officially. Um, but a couple of the songs I had written before, I didn't even write them with the intention of putting them in the album. But through the process of compilation, I go through a lot of the, the works that I've written, some of the poems that I've written and decide, okay, these are themes that fit into into the mix of what I'm doing. I try to always cover a particular breadth of themes when I am, you know, working on an album. And so for me, for this project, I wanted it to be more personal because nine, calling the album nine makes it self-titled for me because I am nine. I, I take that number very personally too. And um, and so I knew it was going to be nine tracks and I wanted to make sure that I cover the breadth of themes that I I am, um, you know, I think are important to present to the ones. And I think I did so. I <clears throat> I thought some of the the process is always different for every song. I don't really have a, okay, this is how I'm going to do it. Once I know the songs, once I know the themes I'm going to cover, then it's just a matter of putting the music together now, going into studio and um, and recording the music around the songs. Or I might, for a few of them, I actually found some rhythms that just connected with me immediately. And then I, I wrote one song, Humble Me. I wrote that to a rhythm. And it's not very often that I do that. But it was a rhythm that really spoke to me. And then I, you know, I did my overdubs, made it my own. Uh, but yeah, it, it that's kind of the process. And then I produced most of this album, you know, and a few of the tracks in collaboration with some of my favorite producers. But it was all very, very organic and very time consuming and very, very much going back and forth to make sure it gave me the feeling that I wanted. As you mentioned, there are only nine tracks on the album for obvious reasons. Was it hard to narrow it down to this number or did you set out to only record nine songs? I knew it was going to only be nine songs, so it wasn't difficult at all. I knew from before I was even going to do this album that that's how many I wanted to do. My first record, I really wanted to have nine tracks on that as well. 
but we, I wasn't the executive producer of that album, so I had to compromise and you know put in some extra ones. But going forward, I think nine is nine gives you a good enough amount of songs that you can sit with and absorb without being too much, you know. You recently released nine mm volume two, not a mixtape, but groundings in preparation for the album. When listening to it, the first thing which struck me was the amount of thought and effort that must have gone into putting it together from the speeches to the cover versions to the Sizzler medley and the new version of Avocado. This must have taken you some time. <laughs> Actually, that was, you know, when you're tuning, intensity can really amplify a process and so I really just tuned in and blocked everything out and I spent maybe a few days just concentrating on getting this out because it's something I really wanted to do and I started it after I was finished with the album I went through chose the books I mean these are books that I am always reading so I knew the books I wanted to take it from I knew the the particular things I wanted to bring across because I knew you know the themes that were going to be in the album and I didn't want people to just drop in the middle of all of this intense conversation i wanted to kind of introduce them to some of the concepts from before the album even dropped so i decided which one of the i chose the excerpts first uh the covers i knew tracy chapman and nina simone are two women who are great inspirations for i so i knew i wanted to do stuff with them so i kind of just made a list of everything i would want on it and then i narrowed it down to nine and then I couldn't narrow it down to nine, so I turned it into 18 tracks. And then, I mean, I thought, okay, maybe 27, but no, no, 27 is too much. So continuing that process. So for me, the mixtape was probably harder to compile than even the album. But it was a, it was a joy same way, because it reminded me, I, I drew for some books and some experiences that I hadn't looked at in a while. You know, and it was cool, because I went into studio, like, over the course of two days and recorded everything. And then, you know, it was supposed to be a collaboration with another producer, engineer, who was going to mix everything and put it together for me. And at the last minute, he said, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it. I don't have any time. And so, like, the very last day before I had to hand it in, you know, we had to spend, like, the next 24 hours just pulling everything together and finishing it up. So it was a really, really intense time. But I'm really happy with that. Dronvalo Mel Chesedek. I found what you spoke about on this track very interesting. It made me go and research a few things as soon as as soon as I listened to it. But I need you to give me a little clarity, please. Can you give me a uh, brief explanation of prana and how it impacts consciousness? Well, prana, you know, when you inhale. We've been taught in Western science that when you inhale, you're inhaling oxygen. But there's so much more in the environment around us than just oxygen. There are other compounds in the air, as well as there is literal life force energy in the air. Because the whole creation process is one that moves from invisible to visible. That means everything that is going to exist, all the things, all the elements that will be used to create everything come from around us. So we live in an environment where our thoughts become things. So it is from nothing that things are created. So when we inhale, we inhale the potential of creation into our bodies. And so John Valo Melchizedek proposes, and this is something that, you know, this is a, a virgin who has done a lot of research and meditation and has, you know, I mean, what, when you when you look, you'd really have to research who this person is. I don't want to go off on a tangent on, on him in particular, you know. But prana, the, in in yoga, prana is is the life force energy of the universe. And when we inhale it, we inhale it into our bodies. Right now, during yoga, you inhale it into your diaphragm, and the idea is that you're filling your lungs with it. You you you're sending it into your muscles consciously, sending it around your body. And the, the idea is when we had a greater use of our pineal gland before it had shrunken and before, because you know, they tell you, you know, you're only using 10% of your brain. So when we had a greater use of our, of our brain space, you know, we were able to breathe prana, not through our nose and our mouth, but through our pineal gland. And so 
and if you if practitioners of yoga will understand a little better too because when we are taught to breathe there's a there's a kind of breath called ujjayi breath where instead of just breathing into your chest you pull air into your in through your nose not just from the shallower part of your nose but like deep through your nose and you 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 interact with your palate you consciously use your palate to pull air in so i know this sounds technical but i mean these are things that we have to relearn to do now through you know through the exercise of asana and pranayama but these are things that we we have unlearned over the the period of hundreds of thousands of years like we have lost a lot of our capacity and so no we're you know we're just breathing air in through our nose and we're not getting as much out of life as we used to and even those of us who practice yoga and practice pranayama and meditation we still don't even have the capacity to breathe the fullness into our bodies much less the average person who just breathes into their nose and you know shallow breathing or breathe even through their mouth you know so what john valo is is, is pr proposing or presenting is that we we have lost much of our power much of our ability to affect our universe because we don't know interact with it in the same way you're going to be performing in kenya on the day nine is released was this always your plan and if so why it is it has always been my plan to do as much as i can in and for the continent of africa and south america too like just all of those continents where my people are concentrated i want to do as much as i can um and i think because i have that kind of mindset you know the law of attraction has allowed it to unfold where at the end of the tour at the time when the the record is going to be released that is when the opportunity came to do this project in kenya and i was very 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 open to it you know when i saw that that's how it's unfolding so it isn't really that i planned that okay i'm going to do it in kenya it's more i saw it unfolding that way and i really didn't resist because i am really really excited about the idea of sharing this particular set of work with my brothers and sisters on the continent first Personally, I don't think I can compare you accurately to another artist, and that's quite a rare thing. How important is originality to you? Is it something you think about, or do you just do you? I just do me. I don't know. I'm not paying attention to a lot of things either. I'm not paying attention to the industry, really, truly. So a lot of the artists that I'm listening to are are my ancestors you know it's a lot of and a lot of instrumentals and very widely just whatever i am inspired by not by genre or by who does whatever so i i don't really know a lot of my influences are not even musical so i don't know i'm just really trying to be the best version of this creature that i can be and that's you know that results in the music that i'm making Nine, the new album from Janine will be available on September the 9th. The ninth day of the ninth month in this, the year of the nine. Be sure to go and purchase a copy. Janine, thanks a lot. Before I let you go, is there anyone else you'd like to mention? Anything you'd like to comment on? Well, I, I mean, I just want to give thanks for everybody who gave me strength to bring this, to manifest this, you know. My first attempt at producing a record as Janine, as Team Chalice Records. And, you know, without the support of my brothers and sisters, it wouldn't be possible. You know, without the guidance of ones like Clive Hunt and, you know, even Rory Stone, even though he's not on this record. Um, and my team, my musical director, Sheldon Bernard, Sama Kushai, who is creative direction behind, you know, the visuals. Jovan Puran, who is responsible for interpreting the visuals and creating that cover art. You know, Purugad, who took the photographs for all of the stuff that, you know, you see in the, in the artwork coming up in the promotion of the album. And the four producers that are featured on the record. Tippy from iGrade Records out of St. Croix. Uh, Brett De Bova from Belgium, Lost Art Music. Kevin Campbell, my brother, and, um, and of course, Franklin Benoff Irving from Shamba, Shamala Records. 
like these are the people who allowed me to use their works and you know add my own flair to it to add four of the, the, the tracks to the nine tracks that are on this record and of course the musicians who are the great features on this album because they're the ones who really put themselves in my hands and allowed me to produce this work with them and the Akebeka who is the only artist featured on this record, the only lyrical artist featured and you know quite appropriately so everybody who gave any strength to all this and all the people who are looking forward to it and who pressured me constantly to hurry up and do this record you know i'm really really happy to finally be able to share some new work gibbo presents, presents.